Charlie, I want you to tell Julio and Barry what you told me. Ah, uh, okay. It's like this. Somebody's killing street people and making them disappear. <laughs> All of my friends sure and put in the time They're wasting their money and living a lie Hi, I'm Michael Keane and I want to take you back to 1990 where we were introduced to Out of Control the second episode of The Flash TV series. This episode took us deep into darkness into fear into the nightmarish entrapment of Genetics. Bum, bum, bum. There's a lot to praise about the Flash's second episode. Most notably, it's the lack of Iris. Uh, thereafter, that it's also the lack of Iris, and then um, there's just not a lot of Iris in this. There's no Iris. Iris is gone. She's off to Europe. It's fantastic. Swank deal. Yes. There's also the 100% increase in freakish genetic experiments. See, this story centers on the arrival of Dr. Carl Tanner, a genetic scientist whom Tina and her dead husband knew back in the day. Bad guy! Bad guy! He's a bad guy! Right, right there! Look at him! He's a bad guy! Bad guy! Bad guy! Can we turn that off? Fine, then we won't. He's received a research grant and is working at the local university and is possibly disfiguring and killing bums with injections. And when I say possibly, I mean without a fucking doubt. So here's the central problem with Out of Control. The whole plot focuses on a scientist whose evil plot is basically trying to extend human life. Now, admittedly, he's doing this with, uh, you know, killing bums, and that, you know, is what makes him an evil guy. But... Uh... End of disease, birth defects, reversal of the aging process does raise some very interesting moral questions, though, don't you think? <laughs> well, it's not my responsibility to be the conscience of the human race. I'm only a scientist. Well, it's not off-limits. The idea is not just a silly trope. It's also kind of offensive to have the very science-minded Barry immediately disregard one man's work that, in theory, should benefit mankind. Have a nice day! You know who doesn't want to die, Barry? Everyone. Immortality means you don't fucking die. Dick? Aren't you being a little childish? Anyway, that moral hiccup aside, this whole episode is actually pretty enjoyable. The makeup effects are pretty astounding for 1990 television, and a lot of the minor characters shine through in others, such as Stan Ivar's Dr. Tanner. I looked up one of David's old papers in a science journal yesterday. It's funny how close our lines of research were. Fail to deliver. We also get more backstory about Tina's dead husband and other details that help set up the season's dynamic. Overall, I'd say it's a recommend. However, it's nothing flashy. I'll see myself out. Hey, you should subscribe with this thing right here. See this? This right here? I'm pointing. So, subscribe. It's cool what's happening right here. Beep, beep. Just click that. Well, I'll subscribe. Hold on, let's subscribe. Dude, we've been through so much stuff. We gotta see. Right here, man. Come on. Why are you subscribing yet? Click the button. Click the fucking button. Click the fucking button, you dick. God damn. Shit. What the fuck is this green screen doing here? Grumpy cat.